Hey everybody, this is uh, Thomas again, and today I'm here with Mr. Robert. So this is, uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to be with Mr. Robert and uh, try to learn from the master because he is, uh, he's really ingenious on some of the design that he, he, he has here. So when it comes to sharpening blades, sharpening chainsaw blades, uh, woodworking, he's uh, pretty interesting. He's been a, a really good mentor and friend, and uh, now I'm going to Hand it off to him. He's going to show you what he has here. This is a little neat invention he has for uh, prepping the blades prior to setting and sharpening. But take away, Mr. Robert. You put it on kind of thick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have been sharpening, setting and sharpening blades since the mid-90s. And living in South Mississippi, if you cut pine, and there's a lot of sap in there, you'll find out that that sap will build up on these blades and cause you problems. First thing it'll do is it will build up on the inside of the blade and increase your pressure on your blades. I ran diesel fuel all the time, which cut down a lot on the sap, mm -hmm. build up of the pitch on the blades. But every now and then you, you get a blade that's just kind of dirty, one bit hanging on a wall, or somebody will bring you a blade that's just nasty. <laughs> so I used to use a little, your sharpening people will send you a little piece of tool steel that you're supposed to go around the blade and clean it off. Well, I went from the tool steel to a chisel <laughs> to clean it off, which was far superior than the tool steel. But then you ruined your chisel. You and, potentially could. Well, you use an old chisel. <laughs> so one day I said, well, there's gotta be a better way of doing that. So I had this old motor. Oops. <laughs> All right, here we go. Take it away again. So one day I, I had this old motor. I, I don't I always find a a use for everything I have, just because it's old, doesn't mean it's not any good. I, I, most everything I have is old. My wife is old, don't you tell me <laughs> I'm old. So I got this old motor out, and I had this wire brush, and I put this little each collar on there, this little sleeve, and this, where I could mount this wire brush, and then I, Took a, just an old piece of two by four and I put this channel in it, which is just a little bit wider than my blade, so my blade will slide through there easily. Mm -hmm. And I and I said, well, this this wire brush has just got to be able to clean that crud off of that blade. So we're going to demonstrate it. So where'd you get this motor from? Uh, this motor is probably one that my father had. And <laughs> my dad's been dead for several several years and. He never threw anything away. <laughs> he kept old things like he did people. He said, you never throw a person away. Because mm -hmm. one day you're going to need that person. Mm -hmm. Just like old tools. Rusty springs, nails, and oh, yeah. things like that. You look in the junk drawer and you find something and wow, you're glad you had that because that's just what you needed. Mm -hmm. So... My motor is, is kind of unique. It's like all electric motors. They'll all do this. If I want the blade to turn that way, of course, you see my, my capacitor on here is gone. <laughs> it's a bit old. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the starting capacitor. So I just turn it on. And if I mm -hmm. want it to go that way, or if I want it to, if I'm standing over there, I'll go that way. If I'm standing over here, I'll go the other way. That's pretty cool. Runs, runs efficient both directions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I just kind of ease the blade underneath the wire brush mm -hmm. and all this rust and stuff on here. It may not make it shiny, but it'll make it slick and all just like a brand new blade. So we're gonna, we're gonna attempt, we're gonna clean this blade. Okay.
wire brush is not quite wide enough to cover my entire blade, so I do part of it. Then I'll turn up, turn the blade around, mm -hmm. slide it back under there, and we'll do the other side. I usually pull the blade around. I don't put a mark on it. I pull the blade around there a couple of times probably and it just slicks it right up. Sure does. And if your blade is dirty on the inside and you want to clean it up, you just invert your blade. Which is a really cool trick. <laughs> just invert the blade. <laughs> now we have the blade inside out and we're going to do the same thing over here. And see, that's that's an extra step that most folks who sharpen blades don't do. And now this blade is clean. Yes, yes, that blade is ready to and do if, whatever. If you have build up on your teeth, where that wood uh, just kind of builds up on your teeth a little bit, it, it digs all that out of there for you. That sure is a lot easier than using a little yeah. piece of tube <laughs> steel or a chisel. Yeah, exactly. Okay, everybody, Thomas here again with Mr. Robert. We had a little uh, intermission as we fed the animals. We collected some eggs, fed the horses, fed the chickens. I'll have to do a video at some point to show Mr. Robert doesn't buy scratch or cracked corn. He makes his own from whole corn. So interesting uh, little setup he's got there. It, again, he will not waste anything. So it's, it's good. It's what uh, younger generation really needs to pick up on. All right, so Mr. Robert, tell me what you got here. What's this motor? What's the... Uh, what does it do? Okay, what we have here is a uh, an old electric motor, a very old electric motor. <laughs> it has a reduction gear on it. Not sure what it was originally used for. It doesn't matter. I'm using it to take the set out of bandsaw blades. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody who sets blades know that you have to some t some if you hit something, some teeth. Or protrude out further than what the set is supposed to be. Like if I set it 20, some of them may be 25, 30, or whatever. So most people use a little tool like this to bring straighten the tools up. So after a while of straightening those teeth up, mm -hmm. you get tired of doing that. So I said, well, I got that old motor over there. I said, with that reduction gear on it, I believe I can come up with something to save me some time and make things a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So I built this. Myself, of course, you can look at it. <laughs> I know Thomas is going to show you my welder. I'm what you call a, I'm a gorilla welder. It looks like we're a gorilla welded. But the main thing is, it will hold. Yes. So, I don't care what it looks like, it will hold. So, what we're going to do is, the main shaft down here, I welded this sleeve onto it. I went up to my local tractor place, and I bought these two bushings that go on your, like your, three-point hitch back there. Okay. So I, this one, I slid up on the shaft, and I welded it here on the end. Uh, we can see that. The other, <laughs> the other this, this uh, five-eighths bolt, I welded a nut here mm -hmm. with my Gorilla welding. Mm -hmm. I welded this nut on here, and this just screws into it with this bushing on it. Okay. And I have 
a little bit of clearance between the two, just like an old ringer washing machine is what it is. Yeah. And I will turn it on and let you take a look to see what it's going to do. And when I pass this blade through there, it's going to mash these teeth back together. So what I have to do, you'll notice whenever I start running this, feeding this blade through there, I will kind of pick up on the blade a little bit, and that will bring the teeth back beyond the tolerance I want them to be. Okay. So I'm going to turn this on and just let you see, let it run for a second. Yeah, that, that's a finger smasher. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, is, and I don't mark this blade, because what I will do is just let this blade go around three or four times. Okay. And the blade just feeds in right here, and I just I just feed it through. Okay. Needs a little. <laughs> needs, needs a little. Uh, Persuading. <laughs> well, what it, what it needs, it needs a little tweaking. I need to do a little modification to it, which I plan to do. Uh, this is just something that I threw together this past week to try to see if it would work. It does work. I'm going to make a few modifications to it where the blade will track straight through and I don't have to use my thumb to hold it over there. Yeah. That's still, this is something you don't see most people who sharpen and set blades. I don't know of anyone that does this, so. And when you really goober up a blade, yeah, it's, I think that one came with some uh, chicken excrement on it. <laughs> I think it did. Okay, so I think, I think we went around it several times. And I think that will uh, probably did the job. Yeah. So you can feel down through that. I don't feel anything. Other than where I hit uh, some nails. When you hit a nail, you'll get a burr on the actual tip. But uh, Feels pretty good. Yeah. And then from there, you, you take it on to the setter. Okay, so we've just left the cleaning device and then the... Um, I guess the straightening device that Mr. Roberts made. Now we've got it back on his uh, setter, and we're going to go ahead and look at. We just had to do a little bit of fine tune adjusting to get her on there, but I think uh, Mr. Roberts got it uh, figured out. So take it away. What we did is put the blade on here. We zeroed in our dial indicators. We got we got everything the the two anvils adjusted to where we're set. We're going to set this blade about 20 thousandths. Mm -hmm. I say about some one tooth may hit 21, one may hit 22, 20, 21 to 22 thousandths. I'm good with that. Okay. So as we go right here, we own 20 thousandths on each one of those. Mm -hmm. Same here. So okay. what, so what I do then is after I get a couple of blades done, I go one, two, three, one, two, three. And I put a little, Put a little mark right here. So I know that tooth is set. Okay. So when I get out past here, I'll put a mark on it. So we're good here. We're good. We're good. All right, now I'm past, I'm past my scrubber out here, so mm -hmm. I'm going to put a mark on here to where I'll know where I started. And we're going to go around this blade. I'm going to quickly... Scan each tooth. Yep. And there was, like, one was reading 20, one was reading about 24-ish or yeah. something like that. Now he's about 22 now. But again, if you just sit there... Okay, this tooth here has a burr on it. Yeah, that could throw it off, too. So we're going to take our little deburring tool right here. <laughs> A.K.A. <a> file. <laughs> it's called a... Chisel. <laughs> it is a blunt chisel. It, it's not sharp. Mm -hmm. So we're going to just take that burr off of that tooth. Right there. And you get the burr when you hit uh, some type of object that's harder than the uh, metal itself. And what you do is it slightly curls back. If you hit something really hard, you'll actually shear teeth. And like I think I've said in some other videos, you can continue running a blade even with a couple sheared off teeth as long as you don't exceed about four consecutive teeth in a row. Um, and you'll know if you're cutting with a blade, it just ain't cutting right. So, 
Yep, it's looking pretty good. So all he does is then go through and he does that motion and uh, continues to set the blade. So I hope that was uh, in informational. Uh, Mr. Robert has quite the setup. I mean, this is something that he does. Uh, well, he did, he did it for a long time. <laughs> then he kind of didn't do it after he sold his equipment and then he just couldn't stay away from it. That's right. Too much fun. I am in the process of building a room. I'm going to build it 12 by 20, and I'm going to get my setter and my sharpener and my Robert engineered tools <laughs> and my chainsaw sharpener all in my sharpening room. Hopefully within the next month, I'll have that completed. I have a friend, got a fine Timber King, <laughs> all hydraulic, uh, computerized, uh, call you when it's time to go to lunch. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fancy. <laughs> that's, gotta, that's gotta cut the wood for me. Yeah. So this is, this is uh, how I clean the blades. I, I take the set out of the blades and how I put the set back in the blades. Exactly, and this is, he does extra steps that you don't get from other uh, sharpeners. I don't know of anyone else that really does what he does. I mean. He's been doing this for over two decades, and uh, he he takes he takes pride in the work that he does. He does great work. I was really upset when he initially told me one day, he's like, Thomas, I sold my sharpener and setter. And I'm like, son of a, so I had to go buy my own, and I run mine, but whenever I get behind, Mr. Robert's pretty uh, awesome. He'll help me out, and and then if I, if I hit metal, I don't try to fix it myself. I'll bring it to Mr. Robert, because I know he'll get the job done like no other one can. So I hope this has been beneficial. I've had a blast. It's always fun hanging out with Mr. Robert and uh, we'll see you around. Thanks.